Hey folks, it's episode 25 of Biomass tonight. I uh, really appreciate everybody joining us on the live stream or hooking us up on iTunes uh, sometime in, in the near future. Uh, so tonight we've got a kind of a, a compact crowd tonight with uh, just two or three of us on, on the uh, on the board. Uh, so should be pretty tight discussion. We have a lot of stuff to talk about though, actually, which is kind of interesting. Um, obviously, everybody's generally heard about the 1.9 release, uh, which we'll get a quick update from Iron Wolf and... Uh, Soraya on what all is in that, uh, and it looks to be a fair amount. And, I, and my understanding is they haven't actually released all the information yet about what's actually in it, which should be kind of interesting. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about E Vegas and what's going on there, uh, and then other than that, uh, we're we're kind of open for business for anything we want to talk about tonight. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, kick off with some intros. Iron Wolf. I'm Iron Wolf Saber, CP1 Council Member, and I'm just glad to be around. Good deal, and Pokey. Uh, Pokey Draven, CEO of OSG Planetary Operations and co-host here on Biomast. Soraya? Soraya Zell, CPM1 member, co-host here on Biomast, and the leader of the Top Men Alliance. Cool. And I'm Jason Larison, one of the co-hosts here on Biomast, a member of OSG Planetary Operations with Pokey, and also a member of Agony Unleashed on the Eve side. And uh, we're currently terra-assing around Catch, trying to have a little bit of fun with that. So... Other than that, we'll just dive right in. So I'm going to open up the floor to uh, Iron Wolf and to Soraya. So if you've got like CPM type stuff you want to talk about, that that's cool. Or we can go right on into uh, what the currently announced 1.9 uh, release information is. Which, you know, your call. So I'll turn it over to our two CPM reps. All right. Well, it's really just been uh, you know we've been talking with them about 1.9. Um, obviously, for for a little while um, we had. Uh, we had a meeting that uh, I, 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 you know, we we try and be say as much as we can about meetings that we have, and we had, when we can. And I just kind of said, we had a meeting with CCP Rotati. It was a good meeting. It was, I think I said it was a productive meeting. Um, and uh, you know, he he gave us a heads up on what he was working on, and it was, um, you know, obviously uh, very very NDA, um, you know, but uh, we we were all extremely excited. Um, before and after that, and I, I think it probably showed through on the forums um, if people were paying enough attention um, that uh, we, we've been drastically more optimistic the last month. <laughs> I'd also like to state that um, Judge Ryder Manages is back from his um, in real life um, issues, if you, and he should be back with the council helping us out with more things. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about um, Judge being back because um, it's it, it, it it's been kind of rough uh, going through. Uh, you know, the ADS changes and stuff without him to represent uh, the ADS pilots. Yeah, don't let me fly one of those things. I'll be crashing right into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> fair point, fair point. Um, okay, well, if you if you guys don't mind, would you mind doing a uh, quick review of the publicly released information that'll be in 1.9? Sure thing. Uh, one thing that's coming up is the improved um, frame rates because um, we don't figured out a way to uh, well we didn't do it CCP does they CCP has figured out a way to uh, fix the rendering a bit so hopefully this would make means higher frames rate per second and it, it's it's just kind of like slid in there on the patch notes as a thing um, but like I, I heard it was it, it does make a pretty big world of difference I mean I, I can't say how much of one really until we actually have it on our consoles and we get to try it but um you know i heard very good things um about how much of a difference that the changes they made were um so with any luck um you know things like uh the research facility map i'm hoping especially um people will have less complaints about after uh they the frame rate increase uh we're not going to quote frame rate numbers so because we don't know how it's going to work in the wild Right, that's pretty legit. All right, what else you got? Well, because of the fallout of these increased frame rate um, projections is the reason why we're getting the new maps. Uh, once, uh, like currently, we only have two maps. If you're if you're really into the technical part of those, so we're getting a third one to accompany it. So this includes a bunch of things with it, like more little battle zones. So it's not just three, uh, just a new map. It's going to be a bunch of smaller maps too, uh, battlefields that we're going to get with them. Then we're getting the Caldari Production Facility um, socket set being brought in. Now that's the one they were working on for, you know, like, they, hell, back in the, they, the winter, right? Yeah, they were making it, um, like, 
Um, it, images of it were being posted back in um, October of last year, actually. Um, it was supposed it was to have been released in 1.8, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it, and it, it got pushed. Yeah, it was almost it was almost done basically um, last year, um, but it and was just it was just up. working on it and like put everybody on Legion, right? Well, uh, no, no, I mean it was that's not what it's about. I mean, like it's it was it was a performance issue. Um, it could have put it back in dust back then. <laughs> yeah, I mean. The, the map wasn't, you know, they released, you know, when they were working on it, they had just released the Galante facility, which, you know, was fairly similarly spec to my understanding, and the Galante facility was not working very well. Um, you know, it's, and a lot of people would argue it still isn't. Um, so it, it was very much a performance reason it was bumped. Um, I mean, I don't think there's anything to say because, you know, that in the cases of map design would be oh well we can't we're going to stop doing this because legion because maps are something that can be used in legion um and it, you know the the maps that are being developed um are being you know they're they're in a higher a very high quality if you've seen some of the images of of the production facility that were posted you know it's not like they make these things to to only work on the ps3 this stuff is is art they can reuse later Okay, cool. Uh, is have there been anything else that's really? I thought there was like one or two small things that they'd hinted at. The sprint uh, bug has been slain. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was the. Uh, how long has that been out there? Like uh, one point six, I think. Um. So yeah, that that was a big one. The other one is they are actually going to have an actual delay on um on uh firing after cloaking after decloaking, um. So, and I, hopefully speaking, because um, I know there were people concerned that, um, you know, it, I think they said the number on the forums, and it was really short, but there, you know, there's complaints. There there might be concerns that it's either too short or too long, depending on where you are. But with any luck, um, it should be something that they can tweak in, in, in the future without uh, so much hassle, um, now that the actual capability will be in the game. Um what else was in here? Um, Mobile, Mobile CRU war points. points. Yeah, there there was another one of those that it just like everybody knew it needed to be there. It just um, you know needed a patch to put that in and um, revamp uh, the mobile CRU. Okay, no, oh, that's cool. That's that's a um, uh, oh we haven't one. one of the ones we haven't haven't said on here yet was um, selling to vendors. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's the NPC vendors, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna have a sell option uh, in your assets. Um, so you can sell AUR items as well, and you get ISK back for it. Yeah, ISK back for everything that's sellable. Um, I think it's I think it's just boosters you can't sell or something. Um, it, you know, and people will be able to clear out their library of random crud that they got from salvage. So if they figured out what the exchange rate of like an Aurum item for ISK is, is just whatever the market, like a, a vapor core locus equals a core locus in ISK. Is that how it's going to work? I, I don't know if they've said that. That's kind of my guess personally. Um, but I know they have to have, I think it's that they have to have to have already had ISK values for everything because of um, uh, the way payouts work and stuff like that and de de determining how to shift everything. Um, yeah, I was just curious how long it was going to take somebody to figure out they can buy like ten thousand orm worth of core lo you know, vapor core locust grenades and then sell them for how much isk. Well, I mean, it's going to be really easy for people to figure out what the the vendor value is. Um, but uh, you know, it, it probably I I don't think vendoring things will be the, the most cost effective way to get money. Um, you know, oh, so why are you vendoring the AUR item? It already is the required level you need it to be. No, no, no. What I'm getting at is, um, it's it's an easy way to buy ISK. But you can already buy most of the things you can buy with ISK with Orum, anyways. Um, yeah, that's true. It, it, you know, to to some variation. Which then, I guess it sort of strikes me as like, why are we like? Is um, it, it almost seems like it would be easier to get rid of Orum and then just put an ISK value on everything and then let you buy ISK in blocks off the off the PSN store. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it also it's... assumes that the market is static. And it, if I mean, well, it will be because it's a it's a single input source, you know, which will be from from the client. Right, but is it? I mean, is 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 the price of things going to remain constant, or are they going to get ambitious with it and, and have a market that can actually fluctuate based off of buy sell? Uh, the market will quantities? not be fluctuating. Oh man, that'd be so fun though. It would be nice, but it's 
it's more trouble than it's worth right now. Yeah, that's probably all they could do just to get the NPC cell in. Better than nothing. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely, and it's one of those where um, it, it's it's when you look at the original design choices for Dust. You know, it was very clear a lot of their choices were made with something much more grand in mind. So they they didn't put a lot of staple features and functions in that you would see in gosh almost any other game. Uh, selling to NPCs is is a great example of that. That's something that's as a matter of course is in most games, but it was not included because, you know, I, I think originally they really, they truly had a serious vision of where they wanted to take the game. Um, it just obviously has, has not proven to be the case, you know, something they can get to, but uh, having an NPC cell function would have been, you know, gosh, I wish it, I wish they'd had that going back 18 months ago, 24 months ago. Anything else? Is there, is there any other mechanics or, um, I, I guess, you know, kind of classic uh, hotfix style rebalancing activities going on in this one. I, I assume no, there probably I, will be. We're going to mostly avoid hotfix style type fixes. Most of the fixes will be client side only. So, I mean, well, client side required, so to, so to say. Um, we're going to be saving all the hotfix type fixes for the next hotfix uh, right. cycle. It's, you know, we've, we've, we've got a patch, so we want to focus on things that can be, that need a patch. Um, so I don't think you'll see a lot of actual balance changes. The the only reason you you've got like the cloak fire delay is because that that actually requires a client patch to fix. No, oh, that's legit. That, that's you know, if you've got, if you've got potentially one window and only use it to fix what you can. Now, obviously, you can't get into specifics, but is there potentially more to this update than just what was listed in that dev blog, or is that um, pretty much the, the gist of it? This that is not the complete patch notes. Okay. And we're Please get look that forward to the, the additional dev blogs. Yeah, there there will be there will be posts. Um, uh, Ritati will be writing lots of things. Nice. What charts? Lots of charts. I you know it's Ritati, so I, I I would assume there has to be charts and graphs, but I don't know. I mean, it's also CCP, which is you know charts and graphs is kind of their bread and butter. Well, it's always refreshing when I see changes based off of actual statistical data rather than whims. So. You know, I, was, I, I was just watching a video about how uh, balancing based on statistical data was bad. Is I that saw that video. It's, a, it's actually pretty accurate. That, that's a good video. <laughs> Is it specifically for Dust or just in general? Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we watched Pyrex's video. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Well, if you think about it, it goes back to what, uh, it's like, I know I've said it. I, th I think Bam said it. Heck, even Denny has said it on more than one occasion. Um you know, you, you have to be very careful with only using numbers because inevitably what happens is the numbers in your head won't work the same way as they do actually on the screen when you're playing, um, but just based on practical application. So, yeah, from that aspect, I, I can kind of yeah, kind of get behind it. I mean, it. it isn't balanced just on numbers. It, it is, you know. Also, it, 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 it's just that numbers play a big part in it. And if there's not, if the numbers aren't representing it, then the point is to figure out why the numbers aren't representing it. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a level of interpretation and in doing that properly, which is important. It's just before I felt like a lot of times they weren't even looking at the numbers at all. So seeing a little bit more of that is, is good. But I, I get what you're saying, that doing it entirely off of statistics is not a good idea. Well, Ratati does have enough sense to be asking people, it's like, why is this, why is the number I'm looking at so frequently high, or or just the, or is it, why is this number to currently the outlier amongst all of them? It's like, for a while, he wanted to buff the hell out of the scramble rifle, and it's like, why is this not so popular? And it's like, uh, because not many people like the um, semi-automatic function. Well, it's, I mean, it's it's a harder weapon to use, but it rewards the user if you actually get into it. That's, I mean, which is not a bad thing. And had he buffed the hell out of it, it would definitely have been wound up easily in God Terror. <laughs> well, yeah, and and that's one of the things that when you look at balancing writ large, I mean, I actually like a lot of the things Ritati's done. There's there's some I truly don't understand, though. Like, I, I'm willing to bet that I, you know, whatever statistical numbers he, he has shows that, like, you know, the Proto Rail Rifle is you know, tops of the pops, but it, it just doesn't feel that way when you actually play with it though, uh, compared to other weapons. Yeah, I do I do I personally feel that the rail rifle has fallen quite a bit from from when it was a fun gun. But uh I mean my I, assumption is honestly is a lot of people is that uh 
you know, you have to account for things like rail rifles and combat rifles where, uh, when they, when they came on the scene, there was probably a lot of people that sunk, you know, one to 3 million SP into it the day it came out or within the first couple of days of it coming out. So there's a huge, like pl- individual player sunk cost into it. So they're going to continue to ride that weapon. Uh, and because that was really the only, I mean, once you really got past the, the, uh, AR or the plasma rifle rather, and then they added the scrambler, which was still has always been a fairly low use weapon, but again rewards players that really get into it. I think it skewed the numbers a little just a little bit just because those you know the, the combat rifle and the rail rifle were the newest of the two. Uh, so I think it kind of in a way artificially inflated inflated what their statistics really should you know really should indicate based on overall usage. Well, another thing that didn't help out was that all their starter fits had the um, plasma rifle at the start. That, so that is very true. Yeah. New players could have gotten confused and um, continued training it. Yeah, no, I, I think that's. I, I, I like one of the the big things. One of those. It sounds small, but a big thing that he did was start out with uh, adjusting those starter suits. I thought that was really really nice. That was a that was a good push. Yeah, trying to get it more thematic has definitely done done quite a bit of help. It, it helps convey the. Um, the environment much better. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I guess my question overall, guys, is um, you, I, it sounds like everybody's very, very happy with the 1.9 uh, as it is right now, which I, I would agree. I mean, I think that's great news uh, that they're actually putting something into it. But, uh, you know, what I would offer now is can somebody from CCP, like anybody, talk about what their, like, vision, their plan, their you know, I hate to use the word roadmap, but I don't, I'm really struggling for another word. Um, what they want to do with dust, like over time, it could, like, somebody like actually w- with the word CCP something in front of their name. Eh, that's going to be a tall order. I know who to poke on for that, but I, the question of them will they be able to say anything is um, it I. Overall, I want to put it up to chance to actually get a real response out of them, but uh, it's something we uh, CPM could try to push for to see if we can get out. Well, I for guess you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you see my point with it though? It's like um, it, it, the last thing we heard about the future of Dust from members from actual CCP employees uh, and things that we've also read from CCP employees in media interviews or gaming gaming interviews. Uh, was that there would be no more resources put into dust and there was no more new content in X, Y, and Z. Obviously plans change. And, and I think we're all very happy with that. I'm just, I'm looking for like any indication that somebody could come out and say, Hey, look guys, you know, this is all stuff that we wanted to do for you for a while. Let's put it in there. Uh, but your focus is still over here. We may or may not six months from now, you know, put in another client side update. Uh, if, if somebody would come out and say that, I think it would, I think it would actually be a huge, a huge thing for them, whatever they say. Uh, cause if you think about it, nobody was expecting 1.9 really, except for like, you know, the half a dozen of you on the CPM. So I think, I think it would be really useful if they would come out and talk to people, uh, much like we've been asking them about Legion, because, uh, you know, I, in, in all honesty, as, as glad as I am that they came out with a 1.9, they're, they're kind of setting it up to be a pseudo toxic, you know, relationship where the CPM, who are not employees of CCP, are the actual spokesmen for CCP. And that doesn't put you guys in a really good position either. So no, especially just, since we actually can't tell tell people anything. Yeah, and and if you think about it, what happens is like you guys keep telling people like, no, trust me, it's it's going to get better, and they're like, yeah, whatever, and then suddenly something changes, and then the only people we hear from is you. That really much more closely identifies you with. There's a fine line between, you know, not disclosing information in an NDA and then misinformation, like active misinformation. Now, I don't, I don't think any, obviously, any of you guys are really crossing that line, but it, it clearly doesn't. It's not a good communication strategy because it sounds like there's something to communicate about dust. It would seem like to me, and and even if it's like, hey guys, we just really wanted to do you a solid because a lot of you stuck with us you know, after FanFest. So we've pushed through this 1.9 patch. Uh, and oh, by the way, don't expect anything in the future with it. Uh, but here's a few things generally we would like to look at if resources are available. Like something as simple as that, I think would be 
uh, huge for for like the community that that has stuck with them, you know, through kind of an ugly stretch. Yeah, because I mean, the, the CPM is supposed to be the voice of the players, and right now you guys are kind of acting as. I'm mean, not saying that you aren't doing that, but you're also kind of acting as a uh, unpaid PR group for well, CCP because they aren't the ones talking; they're the ones that have you talking, and that's just like Jason said, a potentially toxic relationship, and it, it, it makes me wary. Yeah, and and we definitely want CCP to be to be talking more, and and we bug them pretty regularly to, uh, you know, post stuff. Um, but you know, they there's obviously um, a lot a lot of things in play in the, at the company, and and figuring out what they they can say and what they can't say, and when they can say it, and everything is lots of fun. Oh, I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure of that. Okay. Uh, well, anything else on the 1.9 uh, piece that you guys are you guys are interested, in? or maybe what do you think the next set of hot fixes are going to look like? You know, if you, if there was something that you're aiming for that you would that you guys are going to actively sort of try to press Nerf on the next uh, pistol, Nerf it. Logistics. Yeah, I, I figured that was that was probably the thing that was due next in terms of like uh, larger pieces. Anything with vehicles coming up? Uh, yes. Is that all we get? <laughs> uh, we don't, the thing is, we don't know what we're going to get shoved into the hotfix, but we uh, CPM has, and community has been pushing us all to um, getting uh, variants thrown back into vehicles. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to see vehicle variants. I've talked about it a few times, and there's a lot of people who have been asking for it, and I and it should be you know relatively straightforward to do it. We have you know we have the framework for all that stuff already there. We just need to figure out, you know, how to balance it in with with the current gameplay mechanics and and get it out there. Cool. Kind of side, uh, sidebar of that, um, because I don't know if it is a hot fixable thing. I know there's been some question if the code is still left over in the game and whatnot. But uh, a point of uh, of interest for a lot of people, both for logistic and vehicles, are the shield transporter tools or the act of you know repping shields remotely. Um, have you guys had a chance to check if that's possible via Hotfix? And if not, is there any way we can potentially get that into this 1.9 update? Because I think that's actually a pretty important thing in terms of, of those roles. Uh, I say wait a bit. Okay. <laughs> that, that's good enough for me. As in, like, wait a bit to ask for it? Or, like, just oh, be patient? We're, we're in a wait-and-see mode. Okay. All right. Now that's fair. It's just a, it's just a thing that's been kind of been a, a, a pretty big thing for a lot of people out there. So I, I'd like to see that. And if, you know, if this is potentially the last hurrah of a client set update, I want to make sure that that actually becomes a thing at some point to see if we can get it in there. Cause I think it's pretty important, but uh, yeah, if you, you can't talk about it obviously. So, you know, that, that's fine. We can, we can wait and see. I have high hopes that this may not have to be the you know that this may not be the last glass client update, but you know obviously there's no no commitments or assurances on on uh, you know what what yet we'll we'll get. Yeah, it kind of goes back to what Jason was saying. It'd be nice to know what their intention is if this is the last one, or if we could potentially see more down the line. Because you know, like, like you said, it, it's it's been kind of a, a really big deal. I think it was really good timing on in part of CCP and, and pushing this out because people kind of went like, "Holy shit!" You know, I was I was shocked. I mean, I kind of had to reread the dev blog. Like, did I did I miss something here? Is that a did they get a typo? Is that a was that a nine instead of an eight? You know. So, uh, you know, that's, it's pretty cool. And I, I think this will, this is a good move for them in terms of kind of reinvigorating the player base. So hopefully things go well and people gain interest in, in the new content is, uh, is what people hope it to be. And it was, it was, uh, it was pretty tough to, uh, you know, bite my tongue on that. Um, you know, leading up to there'd be, there'd be people saying, you know, well, this really needs to happen and this really needs to happen. I'm like, yeah, it might just happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how how long did you know? If you, if you can say, I'm just curious. Um, I don't remember the exact date, but I th- I think we've known like in the in the rough category of of a month. I want to say. Um, oh, I, I feel I, bad for you <laughs> having it, to hold that in. <laughs> it, it it was. I mean, like last last week we had uh, Jason said, you know, dust is all it's ever going to be, and I'm like, well, you know, there's there's a lot you can do with hot fixes and stuff, and. And he's like, no, dust is all it's ever been. I'm like, I, I can't see I, things. All right, I, now, I, I've got to ask you, do you actually think that slapping a map in there in a function that should have been in there probably two years ago equals 
it's now more than it is. I, I think guess I, technically I, it is, but is holy this, shit, is this, dude. Is this the revenge of our, our pre-podcast discussion of me saying that Eve has done nothing worthwhile? No, no, this is literally <laughs> me asking you if you if you think this is like if 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 this is truly a game changer. I mean what what you're describing to me is a I map th- that for the most part or at least the outpost was had been done for a while for a large chunk of it, but it, they couldn't get into performance issues. So they figured out an optimization way to work on on the PS3, which will likely make it palatable to use. Okay, so that's that's good, but that's also something that should have been done how long ago? A long part time. two, you're telling me that we can now sell stuff to an NPC, which I think I'm pretty sure. Like I'm just going out on a limb. That again, that's like a vanilla 101 level feature, and in, in like pretty much any game that has disposable items of any kind whatsoever. Sure, but this is like a huge <laughs> leap for for CCP. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Blacklight Retribution to have sell to NPC because I get a bunch of junk that um I, I just do, trash. Do I have inventory in Blacklight? Because I didn't even realize it. <laughs> Uh, you got like a thousand slot spaces, which they're trying to sell you some more, but I never seem to hit it because all my stuff expires. See, yeah, that's all their stuff expires, and I don't, I haven't played the game in like a year and a half, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, that's that's big. I think the performance thing, depending on how big of an impact it, it really is, um, it could be bigger than big just because you know, bad frame rate can can tend to cause other issues um so gameplay might be just overall more fantastic with with better frame rate but we 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 just don't know how that's gonna play until we can try it i guess for me it was uh it was seeing that ccp is willing to commit to some degree a little bit more resources than what we currently had and in my mind i kind of accepted that you know, the people working for Tani, that was going to be it. And, you know, that, that was all they were going to get. So the fact that they're putting in an update is obviously a bit a bit more than that. So that's encouraging. Where would they actually go with it in the future is up in the air, obviously. But at least in that regard, I'm, I'm a little more hopeful and optimistic about potentially more stuff in the future. So uh, let's see. We've covered a lot of the 1.9 stuff. I, I think that's, that is pretty much everything that they've publicly announced. Uh, I, I know that they threw like the, the little standard writer in there about, uh, you know, hey, this isn't all the patch notes either, just like you guys said. So yeah, all in all, again, you know, I, you know, I, I'm very happy with, with the with 1.9's, uh, you know, announcement. I think that's I think that's a great thing. Um, I it, it's all it also the unfortunate thing is I think what it also does is continue to highlight the, uh, you know, the, the communication challenges that CCP seems to have and and these are really hard things to dig your way out of once you've once you've made a hole for yourself and that's that's really unfortunate uh, and it it also strikes me is that for them there'd be some things that they could some steps they could take that would really help them uh, but they're probably a combination of uh, unwilling or and and frankly unable due to different you know, different probably internal reasons that they actually can't take. Uh, and again, it's really unfortunate. And one thing that I truly hope is that, you know, all the conditions are kind of there for, again, you know, it it, it continued to drift to a more, uh, you know, toxic environment. I really don't want it to be because, I, again, very glad that the 1.9 is coming out, uh, which was more than what they had originally said and more than what I think most of us expected. So I, I think all in all, uh, good news. I'm cautiously optimistic, but again, it, a lot of it goes back to communication. Uh, most of the concerns were communication on uh, on Legion, and because we we assumed we were getting all the communication we were going to get on on Dust, but now that's proven to be slightly different. So uh, with that, let's see. Let's move on real quick, unless anybody's got any last roundouts on that well, the, kind of stuff. The only other thing that was. Um mention that we haven't discussed here in the development update would be the number of uh the number of people who play the game um yeah yeah, i I think that's a big item too um we you know we were floored when we saw that number and we were very big on pushing ccp to uh get that number out there so what were the numbers like 12 months ago um i don't know um yeah that's what i'm looking for is like what's the comparison 
I'm not sure if I will be allowed to say anything because that might still technically is NDA on um, CPM zero data. Yeah, even I don't have that. <laughs> we, we just have Iron Wolf who remembers that stuff. No, that's that's fair. I mean, uh, I mean, if I'm if I remember correctly, it's approximately three hundred thousand. I think it's probably actually more. You guys just rounded down, uh, but that was unique users in a thirty day period, right? Yes. Okay. And, well, and like that's, I said, that's an average value. So too. So there's there's higher and lower. Sure, and and I think that's the I think the the question a lot of people asked was okay. So what does that look like? you know, compared to other periods in time of dust history and exactly what do you mean by unique user? Cause right now my understanding is that's literally uh, somebody logging in once on like I'm, a given character or an account, right? For, for my understandings, it would be, that would be by, that would be based on PSN accounts. Um, sure. Because that would be, you know, that's the, the granular metric that, CCP has for this is a human being. You know, you know that you know that the characters on an account are are the same person, or at least they're <laughs> the same person if they're following um, the the rules. But uh, that you know, obviously, this would I, I would think count um, people's PSN alts as as different people. But the thing is, I, I I honestly I can't fathom that there's that there's even a a large a a percentage relevant metric of those that are alt accounts. I don't believe that every average player maintains, you know, two, three, four accounts. I know there's I know there's people in the past who've maintained as many as like twenty accounts. Um, but I, I would I would offer that uh, anybody that that plays more than but if you make it through the first thirty days as a player and then you actually start figuring out that you can only run passive SP on a unique PSN that that's where mo like most people's alts actually reside on alternate PSNs because you can actually run right. passive SP on them. Yeah, I mean, that just makes sense if you're going to run an alt in this game because it's free to play. It just makes sense to have a separate account. But I, I don't know how many people do that, it, you know, to the number that it would say, you know, no, no, more than, than maybe at most, you know, maybe maybe that's 10% of the number. No, I think you're right. I, I trust me. I'm not fencing with you on that. I would just offer that. Um, I, again, you know, I'm not being skeptical. It's just truth and lending is the number of different things that equals a single unique login over the over a 30 day span is a lot. Yeah, and and you know that counts people who who tried the game once and left, and people who check their daily SP and and. Don't do anything else. I'm sure, yeah, or just logged um, on, downloaded a patch, and you right. know, called it good. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I mean, that's that's at least what I get from from you know monthly uniques as as a definition. I, I think a lot of people were asking for concurrent user numbers because that's what most people would consider as a much more accurate uh, you know, depiction of player base health. Does that make sense? Well. So, so concurrent user numbers are something we already have because of you offline. But, you know, the, the thing to bear in mind is with all these numbers is maintaining context. And that's something that I don't think that people really do a lot when they look at some of these. Right. Yeah. And just hold on. And that, that exactly is why, I, like I said, not discounting your, the 300K numbers, but I think there's a healthy sense of realism that needs to be injected when – You've got people touting 300,000 users in a 30-day period too. Would you agree with that? I, I don't know. What do you What do you mean? Well, it's it's about the context behind it, right? Because you're about to tell me why concurrent users are. You know, there's context that you have to put behind it, and that may not be the best message. That may not be the best. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, measure, but it's probably at least as good, if perhaps, and you arguably better in terms of overall player base health than. You know, using a 30-day snapshot with a single login counting as one. It's it's difficult because there's pluses and minuses to both figures. Um, you know, the 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 notion that you know, because based on concurrent user numbers, I've seen claims like 3,000 people still play this game. Well, no, like 3,000 people play the game at the same time, which means a lot more people play it in general. And there's a lot of players that are, that maybe only log in on weekends, for example, or only play one day a week or, or varying things like that. So 
the the concurrent user numbers isn't a good representation of the of the size of their customer base. Um, all, right, all right, hold on. Well, define but, customer like somebody that pays for something or somebody um, that downloads a free to play game. I guess I guess in this context it, it would be it would be player base, not not customer base. Um, I suppose though it, it content it could, providers. Sure. Um, I mean the thing that concurrent users is is very useful for is understanding the health of um, if you're in the game, you know how many people, you know how how much does matchmaking have to work with? You know what what are you going to run into the same five people because it can't fill in a, a team? You know, and some of that is again with context because you could have you know a thousand people in the in the queue, but you may still come across the exact same people a lot due to both matchmaking and the fact that people you know tend to be locked into the same match for 30 minutes at a time and everyone from that same match comes out at about the same time so there there's a lot of, of ways to interpret the numbers and i think having more of those numbers out there is good um i don't think people i i would love to have something like more like a daily uniques figure would probably be more relevant to me to to help explain to people that yes there are this many people who logged into the game today and that it's not a three thousand three thousand people at a peak time equals three thousand people play the game um but that's you know yet another number i will say this and i hope it won't be too nda breaking but i have seen the extent and context to where they take these numbers and what they use them for specifically and that 300,000 number is highly realistic because of, of of the things I've seen in the past. But as for us, it, it, there's always um, there are people who are just going to be like um, like you said, they have, they have alts, they just log in. Uh, there are people who join the game and they quit, and there are people who um, just um, play the game like normal. But the thing is, though, CCP has context of what those numbers are and what they mean. So they know all the people who are quitting. They know the people who right. just log on and um, check check their mail and log off. And they know people who, um, they don't exactly know everyone's alts, but they know that people are just logging in just to do something real quick and log off. And it's like, okay, this this might be an alt person. I mean, they, they got idea what the numbers mean on So, demand. well, uh, an interesting question just came up in the Skype channel. I've got to ask, well, why, what, well, yeah, this, is, this is probably this is a tough question for, for me to ask CPM members, but why is CCP so disinterested in sharing any numbers like this? Because most other online games are very open with their numbers. In terms no, of they're not. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Or let me put this way. They're very open when the numbers are good. Let me, let me rephrase that. And that, that is a major problem with a lot of the industry. They stop posting numbers when uh, they start to look bad. And it gets really difficult to keep websites such as uh, MMO Tracker um, up to date because um, a lot of these companies stop posting. Hey. They'll, ha they'll have the Hollywood moment where they just recently launched or once in love with the game. Then a month later, it just all starts going to shit. And, and even even when even when the numbers are good, there you know there's there's business reasons sometimes to be hesitant. Um, you know. But I, I, my personal feeling is that it, it's rare that providing, you know, providing the, the information is it really er, turns out to be a bad thing. Because I, I think in, in the lack of, inf yeah. yeah, in the lack of information, people will invent their own information. <laughs> well, I mean, let's let's look at it this way. Um, for using dust specifically, I don't think anybody, like, there is nobody out there except for perhaps the most naive or uninformed player believes that. This thing's truly competing with, you know, like AAA paid titles out there. Like it's not. Uh, it's a very, very small niche game, which I think we all obviously enjoy because we're sitting here on a podcast talking about it. Um, but I don't think anybody that plays is fooling themselves that, that, that thinks that you know th there's going to be these huge numbers. But I think it is probably good at the state right now. It would do better to show. Uh, more statistics and, and really the whole like a better picture is told when you when you show the uh, the individual logins over the 30 day period and then like average uh, you know daily or weekly concurrent users those two numbers in conjunction with each other tell you a much better story either one taken by itself can quickly lead you down the road the road of you know 
tinfoilery, if if that you know, makes sense. And and there's a you know the the thing too that I think is um, important pertaining to knowing that the numbers are there and what you can do with them is if you have three hundred thousand people who have logged into the game in a month. That is 300,000 people, and if that's an average, then you could predict that somewhere around 300,000 people will log into the game next month. And so what that offers, though, is potential to get those people to play more. Um, you know, so, and right, if someone I think we, we also more, all agree that unless CCP does anything with those numbers in the form of development of the game, there's, it's still going to be like, what, a 99% turnover rate, if not higher? Um, you know, free to play games have a huge high, high, a huge turnover rate as is. I mean, True. <laughs> the the thing to bear in mind is that it's it's not hard to to meet or beat the industry standard when you look at the fact that, you know, like for instance, the the actual um the actual people who buy in, I think is is an average of like for free to play games in general is like 2% of players. So like one out of every 50 players for, plays basically has to pay for the other 49 to play. Yep. No, I, I'm with you, man. Like I said, it, it's just one of those where I think um, is, you know, as you guys said, context is everything. And I would just caution anybody about uh, being overly uh, smug about those numbers because uh, you can poke holes in them very quickly. Uh, just like you guys can use them as a, uh, an argument or as a, uh, you know, a descriptor of how healthy the game is, it, it, you know, so just kind of just offering that generally, because I've seen some comments from some people that were, um, I think a little over the top when they announced the, the, when that dev blog came out. Was it Denny? Denny was feeling smug. I remember Denny feeling smug. And you're saying <laughs> Denny doesn't feel smug at some point during the day? <laughs> yeah. When doesn't you not feel smug? Yeah, he's he's honestly like one of my least favorite people to get information from, just because he fucking definitely wants you to kiss the ring to fucking have him tell you anything. Eh, I wouldn't say that. I would. <laughs> I, I would definitely say that. Um, okay, well, kind of. Actually, I think we covered a lot of really good information that came out in that dev blog. Uh, by the way, that was a pseudo CCP Rouge sighting. At least his name was on the piece of paper, which means he looked at it and approved it at least wrote it maybe a stretch, but that was at least we, we have some sort of pseudo proof of life. Well, I can't even call it proof of life, but uh, at least his name was mentioned in a CCP official document somewhere. Yeah, the blog would not have happened without him though. He, he's, he, he was, was definitely a big part of it. So mm, that's good. That's awesome. Coming from the guy who is touted as the uh, person that was like so incredibly fired up and looking to change the way that CCP Shanghai dealt with the community, as witnessed by multiple comments from CPM Zero, right, Iron Wolf? Oh, you're, you said you're going to kill me if I said it again, so I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just messing with you, man. It, it's I got you. Um, well, I do kind of want to transition on and uh, r really quickly uh, for anybody that's playing Dust. You, if you play Eve, of which there's probably still a, a fair a fair percentage of folks out there, Eve Vegas is uh, obviously going on, and I know I know where Soraya is going with on this one, but uh, they do they have been announcing a lot of big changes in uh, uh, in Eve. Now, one of the things I, I did pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, right. I'm I'm gonna. If you want to go down this road, I'm going to go down the list of show me what big changes are happening in any game else that CCP is making. Oh, well, so, you know, when you set the standard there. Right. So, but my point is, um, I did, I was actually kind of interested to see how Vegas was going to go through. I did follow the Twitch stream a little bit and have been talking to some of the guys that are there. Um, obviously, I skimmed it, the it keynote is, it is before the podcast. Vegas. It, it was pretty good, actually. The, um, you know, they had a Valkyrie table and had some hands on. Uh, obviously, no mention of Dust or Legion, which I found a little bit aggravating. Uh, it's it's very much like um, they kind of really wish those two things to kind of go away publicly, uh, which is leading, which I suspect is in, in no small part of the uh, internal issues that 
the Shanghai team are running across it, in terms of how they desire to function or, you know, communicate, I suspect. But that was one of the things that really, um, it, I kind of expected it, but it, it did aggravate me slightly is that you would have thought that they would have at least perhaps mentioned it, you know, or threw out a poster or said, yep, we're still working on this other stuff at a minimum, but obviously none of that was mentioned. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, you know, it, if they're, when they're going to say something, they're going to say something. And I don't, I, I personally, you know, I know there was a lot of people specifically hoping that they would specifically have something to announce at, at E Vegas. And I'm like, honestly, if they have something to announce, I'd like them to just announce it and not hold it for, you know, a big special event. I think that's what, you know, that like was fan the fest. Pro- yeah, yeah. Like fan fest. That was the problem in the first place. And you know, it sounded like people were clamoring for them to be doing that again, or or hoping that's what they were, you know that they were doing that again. And and uh, you know, when they're they're ready to speak on it, they will. I just wish they'd hurry up about it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's fair. I, I, unfortunately, it's one of those where I think at least acknowledgement that they have other properties that are out there uh, that tie into the into the New Eden universe would be, I th- I think enough. <laughs> But when you when you I'm not going to say anybody went out of their way not to say anything because that's really because it was really you know Eve devs that were there it was nobody that probably really has anything to do with Dust or Legion uh, but previously they have had people that would out, that would go out and speak about you know Dust or speak about Valkyrie uh, they at least had some you know some of the team that was there not dev team but like some of the uh, the marketing the PR team that, that's there for uh, Valkyrie and you could get some hands on there. So I'm not asking for hands-on of Legion, but I think at least a, a mention of it uh, here or there would have been probably kind of nice, I suspect. But anyway, they did announce quite a few other things happening in EVE. And I know, uh, like, you know, Sarai is going to say, say that nothing's happened in EVE since, like, 2011. Since and, 2011, Incarna was the last it was the last content that EVE got. And I will, I will offer that anybody that plays EVE more than enough time to, like, just set their skill queue, then log back off. I'm Update skill queue, actually. and I don't have to do that anymore. That's I am right. so excited about Phoebe. I, I, I can't even. I, you know, I, I can get rid of the phone app. I actually already installed it because it was uh, draining battery, draining battery. So I, I removed it because you know, um, as soon as as soon as Phoebe comes out, I don't ever have to worry about my skill queue again. I can set like everything up until I know like every skill in the game level five, and then just log off and not care. True, and for the record, you now sound like Kane Sparrow. So. And then I will have successfully won Eve, because you do know that that is the only way to win Eve. Is to stop playing completely? Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, but he's not winning Eve because he's still paying the money and skill and logging the skill queue. I won't have so. to log in though, so I will be winning. I will still be paying the money for no, some. No, you'll, you'll, you'll be tying. You'll, you'll be like pulling a straight a straight tie at that point. So anyway, the some of the the big things coming up in Eve, which and why does this matter? To, why does this matter to us for Legion? It, you never know. Like I would say, probably eight months ago, it would have mattered probably more significantly. But it's interesting. Uh, one of the things I found a parallel to was they're changing a lot of the power projection stuff, like the ability to move from like one side of the universe to the other relatively easily. And that was one of the beefs that we talked about with PC was their ability to project across the galaxy, like essentially instantly. Well, it's not quite instantly in Eve, but you know, with a very well-organized high end Alliance, they can move from uh, one end of the map to the other and, probably 12 to 15 minutes through a series of sino chains like basically for lack of better terms horribly incorrect here but like a series of um targeted wormholes let me put it that way that that are player created there's a lot more there's a lot more tech and lore that goes into it because it's not exactly a wormhole but anyway uh but one of the things that that led that i found very fascinating in terms of a parallel between eve and uh particularly the the pc you know, the high end PC world of dust was that power, power projection piece where you could have like a limited number of people that could control a lot of stuff based on their ability to move around the map. Well, uh, what it created was essentially a big blue donut in, in null sec, which is not dissimilar to what it started to lead to in dust. So basically what they did is they really took a ginormous nerf hammer to the ability to move that easily, uh, either A, that fast, and B, they created, uh, you know, without going into a lot of technical detail, essentially, 
uh, a fatigue mechanism where you can make jumps, but the more that you jump in a certain amount of time, you get an exponential sort of jump fatigue. You know what else they created? Character. No, go ahead. They also created a giant thread knot. Four hundred and it's, some odd it's, pages. It's, cool. Yeah, it's it's the new uh, it's the new capital ship class. It's the thread knot. Yeah, it's pretty legit. The, uh, but it, it was pretty interesting. So, it, and there's massive ramifications. And one of the biggest things it'll it'll really do is the the big nullsec blocks. The, one of the things that, other than their ability to to project offensive power, um, or offensive or defensive power for that matter, is was their ability to actually sustain their empires uh, through like jump freighters and all this other kind of jazz. Well, that, that really dramatically gets, gets whacked too. Not as bad as the combat ships, but it's whacked pretty good. So it will definitely change. I think the political landscape of, of Eve, which it is won't probably break the good. CFC. It will make the CFC smaller because, um... I, well, if you already talked to the CFC guys, like they would tell you that they already know that there's certain areas that like, they can't get down to to help. Well, I mean, like that's ter- the problem. I mean, like territorially, it might be smaller, but I doubt you're going to see you know them not be the force that can win any war from this. Well, um, no, I think the the issue right now is that they're they're not going to be able to move uh, because what what's going to happen is I think it's actually going to make everybody more defensive. The theory is that is that it it will limit the larger coalitions and it, and it truly does. Uh, sure. The bigger, the bigger problem they're going to run into is the, is how are they going to be able to move and make big offensive moves against each other? And they're really right. not. So the, the CCP's theory is, is that it would actually create it internal limits, political fractures, but it, you know, it limits everyone. And so the, the biggest players are just going to be the ones that are most able to cope with those problems. Because sure. they have the most resources to do so. So, you know, the the, the, the highlight point here is not that this is, sp- this is going to fix NullSec. Because oh, it's, it's not. not. And they've what already said is, that, by the way. Yeah, right. But, but you don't really is, pay is, attention to Eve the, anymore, so, but yes, you would know this. It's the, it's the <laughs> first step to redesign, to a redesign. I'm not sure to call this a pandemic legion nerf. <laughs> That's that, that is what a lot of people call it. By the way. I, I guess it could be, yeah. That they they tend to to do more running around than others. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely see your point that it would just make people tend to uh, keep their keep their supers at home where they need them. Um, well, the, the, the issues are they're not going to be able to move them fast enough. Is the problem, and, and and that's and by the way, not everybody thinks that's a problem. Like I. I would just offer that, it, you know, as you as you indicated, this is one in a series of um, fairly well laid out changes that they're laying out that will probably change a lot of the face of how Eve works. Uh, and they've actually, you know, and I will have to give CCP Seagull credit. Like once she came on board, their communication to the players has been dramatically different. It was not necessarily bad because a lot of people were talking to people and it may, may not necessarily have been as organized, but it very clearly seems like there is a, a, you know, an information campaign that is out there uh, from the devs because they're all basically talking the same language. But there's and still nothing that will out. attract new players. Well, uh, not yet, but they are, they are clearly working on it. But I would also offer that, like, be careful that you throw rocks, CPM member. Shh. But anyway, they they do have quite a few uh, significant changes going. As Sarai was talking about, there's an unlimited skill queue because Eve obviously works on a time-based SP system as opposed to an activity-based SP system. It does kind of have a, has a hybrid of it, but um, I think overall that's a great thing because like anybody that travels for more than a minute, it's <laughs> it's a huge benefit. Um, I, I definitely prefer active SP uh, personally, but um, I think if you actually tried to do that, like if you actually tried to put in an SP system based on doing things in in Eve, um, I, I think I think the veterans would would just throw up their hands and and I, stop I think, off. I, I think in all I've, honesty, it would be very difficult to install an active SP system in in Eve because of the amount of things that you you can do. Does that make sense? All the exploits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the exploits, yeah. I'm going to shoot my best friend hundreds of times over, and I'm going to pay him every time I do it. A lot of people did that in Faction Warfare, by the way. 
the uh, but th there are a lot of things going on. I mean, they've made ginormous changes in, in industry and invention, which I know Pokey's all about. Um, well, they've made some changes. I don't know. If I call them no, right they're, they're, they're pretty fucking huge. <laughs> And there, there's more coming, and that's the that's the big message. The um, multiple sell orders, which is really good if you got like a ton of like low ball loot, like like really like meta level one loot. It's a, it's uh, a trash button, is what it is. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, which frankly is is a heck of a lot lot more convenient. Um, let's see, they they are doing a very significant uh, in space UI over overhaul, like. A very significant one based on but like, how the videos radar. And chats. Yeah, yeah, but everybody hated serious. the first one, so I'm not sure. Like everyone hated that feature in general, so I'm not sure how well it'll be received. Mm, the new not one. on it's the a, threads that they seems like you haven't looked at useful thread, now. Like, no, I'm, I'm oh. telling you, like you're 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 not seeing this. You're not reading the same things I'm reading. Then. Well, no, I meant like the the when they first put the sensor overlay out there. Like but I want to say this isn't the sensor overlay. This, this is, is like your actual HUD. It's like your actual heads-up display. Yeah, but I mean, like the the first step for that was was very poorly received. This is, this sounds better though. Um, it looks like it actually has practical use. Does bookmarks? Yeah, yeah which, which is huge. Bookmarks is that's one of those that I've wanted to be able to just see where things are for forever. Yep, I mean, but like I said, there, there's th this is step probably two point five in a series of steps that they've laid out that they're going to be taking on. Uh, and, and this is as close to have as laying out a an actual roadmap for Eve as I think they've really come in years. Uh, but it's it's a pretty lockstep piece. And, and Grayscale even went down the kind of went down the line of what are the six major components that they have to change. And it's I I think that this is actually going to be good. My impression right now is that there's. Um, you know, CCP, we can, we poke a lot of fun at them. We throw a lot of rocks at them, but the reality is, you know, that, you know, they, they have survived in an industry that is littered with, you know, companies that have come and gone. And I, my impression right now is that they are actively seeking to foment change and re-energize different components of, of their business, particularly and really anchoring on the new Eden IP. And it's probably no small point out there that things like Elite Dangerous, you know, Star Citizen, and uh, any number of other Will potential eat CCP's competitors. lunch and put them out of business. Say again? Will eat CCP's lunch and put them out of business. Because they look like they were made this year. I'm seriously glad that you are a CPM representing any game that any player of CCP actually, any player of their games. <laughs> I, I just I, I think from from I think their concept their where they are in a space game CCP has a lot of work to do. I'm, my I think my point before you attempted to troll and failed was that I think they realize that and they're uh, th and they are significantly attacking that problem. And then the issue becomes you know there's really two ways to do this. One of which you alluded to earlier is you literally just stop stop messing with the game. Period. And you change nothing, and you essentially build a 2.0 version of it, like you know, Eve after next or whatever. Uh, or you work through an incremental set of activities that then build you to that state. And it sounds like that's what they're doing. Yeah, there are so many old systems in Eve Online that needs looking at, needs ripping out, guts replacing. It's not even funny because there are just some things in Eve that developers don't want to touch with a ten foot pole because nobody knows how it works anymore. Sure, but they're yep. all they're they're all the spaceship content thing, and working on working on spaceship combat is not. I don't think it's productive. I think it's in a good enough state that they should be working on the universe building aspects that actually make people want to want to try the game. Mm, okay. Well, that's where building your own Stargate comes in. Well, there's that, but I, I'm, now, mind you, that's that's so that's the one Jesus feature that they've they've stated, and they've given no indication how this is supposed to work. It's to me, it seems like some sort of almost like a hybrid idea between wormhole space and and null. But you know, it's just okay. Well, we added some more space and a new way to get there. Um, you know, it's not like of new people I've seen trying Eve or interested in Eve. Those selling points have been, you know, I, there were a ton of people 
who came to Eve to tr- because of Incarnate. As bad as a, of an expansion as as it is um, put for being, a lot of people went to try it. And you also had, and the the other thing I've seen a lot of people come from and expect, and still come to expect, is wanting to see the Dust Link in this connected universe that they were selling until they decided they I I don't know if that they couldn't do it and that they were just gonna um, make every game good independently or, or you know whatever the blog said the the blogs say um, I I think that's where the 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 importance is if you want to to cover not just being a spaceship game, which I don't ever, I don't really believe Eve is at its core. Um, if you want to be, you know, the the fantastic MMO that it could be, they need to focus on building out the, the universe past the spaceship game. Okay. Uh, I don't disagree with you. Because, uh, I mean, like for the record, Star Citizen, it basically promises to do what Valkyrie, Eve, and Dust all in one, individually. Yeah, in yeah. one integrated game. Um, of course, now, as I say that and make that sound like it's going to be really cool, and I, I, I have given them money, I've said this before, um, Star Citizen is going to fall flat on its face. It's going to be hilarious. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. But uh, it's going to make a ton of money in the meanwhile. They just hit like $56 million or something. Um, you know, that, that, that they've had people pay them for a game that doesn't really exist yet beyond what is effectively a couple of tech demos stitched together. Sure. I, I don't disagree with that. I, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not quite sold on star citizen. I think it's, uh, you know, either going to be brilliant or it's an incredibly well-designed and well-executed scam. Um, I'm still laughing at the flashlight incident. Details. Okay. Star citizen had this flashlight on your character. Well, why are you going to find around a spaceship? This flashlight will come loose and kill your ship. Eventually. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's that's awesome. Or, or, is there a video of this? Because I have to find it. Uh, it was a bug on the forums that they had to hunt down. And it's like, why are these ships blowing up after five hours? That's hilarious. That's awesome is what that is. That's a feature. Well, if your inertia if your inertia dampener were to suddenly turn off in mid flight, then yeah, I can imagine a flashlight killing your ship. As well as you splatting against its side, painting it red. Mm-hmm. Well that's isn't that Eve's plan for implementing ship painting? <laughs> Maybe oh, for the Blood Raiders. Well, I, I suspect the, uh, you know, like I said, there, there's a lot of things out there that's probably driving them to change. But again, you know, the reality is that they are at least actively taking steps and they're communicating with the player base what their intentions are. And right now, you know, they have followed through with everything that they've said that they're going to do, uh, at least in the last, you know, three, you know, named releases, which are, you know, I kind of a patch not really or like a full release uh, well patches. again i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna point out that if you want to troll you really need to go do your homework because like really well-informed trolls actually can troll like now you're just throwing poo uh but they've actually had some pretty significant changes over the last two or three and they're attacking them and in, in, i think the the issue is depending on what you do in eve they, they literally to your to your point though Depending on what you do in Eve, some of those uh, patches or releases may not look like it's doing a lot because it may not affect you directly. But the people it does affect, like whoever plays something or in- interacts with things that they've been changing, I think they would all uniformly say that they've they're, they're taking a pretty good pretty good whack at stuff right now. But let's see. All right, moving on. Any other E Vegas notes? I'm checking real quick. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they obviously did release. They're going to have some new T3 stuff coming out, um, which would be kind of interesting. That was kind of a neat little uh, in-game, uh, in-game yeah. event that they ran to to generate which race was going to get the the new T3 ships first. I thought that was kind of cool. So I was I was really expecting T4 ships to be behaving like what this destroyer is going to be behaving. I, I think that they're so far from actually having a complete Tech Three that there's zero point in talking about a Tech Four. Well, no, but they're not going to release a complete Tech 3. They, I mean, they don't even have Tech 2 versions for some, some of the bigger ships, and the reason why is because if if you tried to make like a Tech 2 Super, it would be kind of ridiculous. Well, no, because the whole idea is, you know, that a Tech, tech 2 ships aren't really supposed to be 
technically superior. They're they're supposed to be, um, you know, more more specific to a particular sure. role and better at that particular role with limitations on the other side. Yeah, well, the, uh, absolutely. Well, the reasoning for my Tech Four comment is because the way the destroyer functions entirely differently from the cruiser, because the destroyer transforms mid mid combat on its rolls, whereas the cruiser can't. You actually have to go dock up, change the subsystems out, sometimes even rip rigs out, and then refit the whole darn thing. But the destroyer just like, click, I'm doing it on the fly. Well, my impression also is it's going to be, like, the changes that you can introduce to it will be uh, much more limited. So it's going to have, like, the, the transformer modes instead of the subsystems, whereas the subsystems give you, like like in a Tingo, Pingu, excuse me, your subsystems gives you a, a, just a dramatic shift in what you can do, depending on how you want to set it up. Uh, whereas I think your I think your your choices will be limited with the destroyers. It's basically three presets, is what it sounds like. Uh, which yeah. Now the good thing is that you don't have to mess around with skilling up for different subsystems, and you don't lose clone SP when you get blown up and potted, which is a major drawback to you know, running tech three, tech three stuff right now in terms of a strat cruiser. So from that aspect, I actually, actually, actually think it's a pretty novel approach on how they're, how they're looking at this. And to be, you know, to be frank, if this goes over, well, I, I think you're going to, I think this opens the door for other types of tech three stuff, like, like as a future sort of baseline for tech three. It just seems kind of strange to me that it's, it's so drastically different in the same tech you know the same tech level to to behave so differently well the point of the tech three is is to provide versatility uh or at least provide the ability to adapt to at a different environment whereas tech one stuff generally is frankly a pretty good all-around uh all-around ship depending on what you've got you've got it laid out to do and and the reality is like your support skills matter huge in a tech one ship just like they do in a tech two ship and there's been a lot of tech two you know you know boats out there that's been blown up by tech one hulls another thing i would like to note about the tech three tactical destroyer it is not a strategic cruiser uh, cruiser so that could actually be an indicator that um they're trying to differentiate between the uh, tactical and strategics that that is actually not a bad point um they, they are truly looking at, I think, different usage, you know, usage designs behind them. So from that aspect, and one thing Eve has always done very well, frankly, if even if they missed a mark on, on quite a few things, they understand how to uh, theory craft and practically design like the ships that you fly in Eve. They're, they're generally pretty good at that. I'm, I'm getting death threats from the uh, Skype channel, so I have to speak up here, but uh... Godin is is uh, tinfoiling a bit, saying that the Tech Three uh, destroyers are going to be the the new Tech Three, and that the uh, current Tech Three uh, cruisers will end up being the new Tech Four. So you've got a preset versus the subsystem sort of deal going on. That that makes sense, actually. As much I I cannot believe that I'm actually in in a fairly public forum agreeing with Godin, but that that actually doesn't that's not that's not fucking crazy. That sounds so fairly legit. Well, because I mean, you've got like you get like the preset for Tech Three, and then the Tech Four. It's, it's got more flexibility and risk associated with it, so you've you've kind of got a a progression of, of specialization. That's, that actually is a pretty solid idea. So yeah, I have to say I agree with them, and which again is kind of scary, but it happens from time to time. I wouldn't mind a tactical cruiser. Yeah, no, I could t- I could totally see that. Now I will say I will tell you this though, I don't I would not expect. Tech three slash tech tech four. We'll just call it the new Tech thirty four. I would not expect any of that uh, above the battle cruiser size, though. And, and I'm not even sure they'd bring it into battle cruisers, at least not for a while. They're certainly not going to get it into battleships and above. Battleships are probably the biggest they'll get it. Uh, even that, man. I think that's like that. You know, even that might be a little bit over the top. I mean, Marauders. Uh, you know, if you if you set your marauders up correct correctly and you put them in, in the, into the right position, they're it's that shit's rough to deal with. Mini treads. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and by the way, anybody that ever thinks you should need a tech two dreadnought, you're you're fucking insane. 
Maybe a carrier, but I don't see a dread, I don't see a tech two dread being useful. Oh wait, in. you know what they also speaking of carriers, um, unless uh, they split them to like anti station and anti ship. Did you? Yeah, now that that I could see that. But did you did you guys catch the comment about pocket carriers? They they were talking about a uh, they they casually dropped that they were looking for um, they were, they were looking to put in basically so it was like pocket carriers like a carrier you could use in high sec essentially which I thought was kind of interesting you know it probably it's, a, it's, a really old, it's an old idea I even drew pictures back in two thousand eight no yeah I'm down with that though I think that'd be pretty cool actually back when I was still um Nova, Nova Fox shipyards and I was just making a whole bunch of fan ships. Yeah, the idea is pretty old. It's older than it's older than me even. Oh no, no, I'm I'm with you on that. I mean, and I know they've also they've got a new logistics or like true logistics ship, not like a Logi ship, but a an actual uh, freighter. They called it the Tug. I don't know what the heck of that what it's supposed to do, but it sounds well, I mean, like a, a transport name. ship. It's just yeah, it's it's designed to just carry ships around, it, which is pretty much what we use carriers for now. But I you know I assume it's a subcapital. That's what it it's sounds a, like, yeah. It's a freighter-sized ship. It can carry fully fitted ships, and quite a few of them. Unlike the carrier, which the most you can shove in, it's like two full battleships. Which is pretty cool if you uh, like doing incursions and whatnot, and you move your home base around a lot, because it can be a real pain in the ass to, to break your ships down or move them individually, and then you're losing rigs, and it's a pain in the ass. So uh, that's actually pretty cool. I, I'd like to see that. Yeah, it's going to make the wormhole's life much easier, at least. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, and that's that is one of the interesting things I find about this is that uh, you know Eve doesn't have a lot of different game modes, but it definitely has different sort of environments that you play in based on different sex status and then not and then the wormholes and that that I, and I think it, what what I find fascinating is that a ship in one location functions totally different or doesn't function at all in another region of space, but it, it, it's that's one of the things that like, continually. Uh, I enjoy working with and trying to mess around with is trying to find different like sort of novel ways to, to use stuff. Um, and if you ask yeah. the people I fly with, they tell you I fail at it a lot, but I, I do have a lot of fun fun playing with it. Yeah, I have to agree that the culture cultures between various places is very interesting to watch and observe, and sometimes you can partake partake in because like the shenanigans that happen in high sec, um, there's different factors of that. Then you go to low sec and like all the rules change. And then you go to null sec, all the rules is also different there. And then you go to wormhole, and it's like it's like Mad Max out there sometimes. <laughs> but well, like I said, guys, I I, th I thought it was some pretty interesting stuff that they laid out. Um, it's very debatable, you know. And and I I mean, try I poke fun at each other quite a bit on this, but you know the reality is dirty that Mac I, user. <laughs> yes, but we do actually. I, I don't think. If you're interested in, you know, Dust Legion, Valkyrie, Eve, whatever, um, the reality is it's all it's all wrapped into a CCP game, and and as much as we poke fun at them, we generally poke fun at them because we want them to be successful, um, because that directly feeds like what our our desired gaming community is. So, uh, you know, don't take us too seriously. Uh, other than the fact, unless you agree with me, then frankly, just take me incredibly seriously. Then, but. Hi. Um, it's overall we we generally I know we poke fun at different CCP games, but the reality is we like I said we we want them to be successful, and it's easy to get frustrated sometimes. One because we've I think we've been playing CCP games for so long, and then it just seems that um, it feels like it's even longer than it really is. It probably does, but you know I think what what I I determined uh, earlier today I was I was thinking about it you know before we came to the show, but one of the things that aggravates me. And this is one of the few, they're one of the few gaming com companies that actually gets me involved enough in their products to actually get aggravated. Like, I generally don't get aggravated at other games. I just don't play them, you know, if they start to get me that way. Uh, but it's, it, the potential is so huge for what, what they put on the table. Um, that, that's generally what keeps me coming back. And and here's, and here's what I, I would just offer to people generally is that, I personally think that nobody at CCP wants to do a bad job. Everybody wants to create and actually make real, I think, what their shared vision is internally, which is probably very huge and extremely technically difficult, um, but they keep reaching for it. Now, they fail a lot, 
or they grab the wrong branch and get some thorns in their hand or whatever. But at a minimum, I, I think they keep driving forward for that, you know, that, that bigger, that grander vision, which, you know, like I said, as ugly as it is sometimes, I have to give them that. And I, I absolutely applaud their effort because frankly, that's generally what has kept a lot of us playing these games for a while. So um, with that guys, I, I think I'm about culminated. I don't know if anybody else has any points, but if, if it's okay, I'd like to go ahead and move into shout outs unless you guys had any last minutes. Them quaff suits. Yeah, but get, do you have do you have your quaff suits yet? Yes. I will not buy pink and purple. Sorry. You must. They're fabulous. They have glowing they green are eyes. Fabulous. I've noticed uh, pe- pe- um, when wearing one of these suits, I've become a bullet magnet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's a BPO, so why do you care? Well, I, th- I think because it's a BPO, it's not fun. Well, let me put it this way: because, like, I just, like I said, if, if they would, like, for twenty-one, was it twenty-one thousand Aurum, right, for the BPO? Yeah. Okay, for twenty-one thousand Aurum, I would really like like something more than like a standard level BPO, frankly. I, I really don't think it's it's combat effectiveness is the reason you buy a quaif suit. I think you buy a quaif suit because you want to look fabulous on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, this is coming from me who said I'm not going to buy the sever suits because I already have the BPOs of those suits, so it's pointless to buy them. And then I went and bought all the quaif suits because they're purple and green. So okay, you know. all right, let's all right, let's let's think through this. How much real money is twenty one thousand arm? Uh that's it's about ten bucks. Ten bucks. Yeah. Yep, I spent forty bucks on purple and green pixels. Not as you will. No, no. Trust me. If it was something, if 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 it was if it was different, I would I'd probably be cool with it. But you know, uh, I just I don't know. I, I just I like I like the fact that the I don't like the fact they made it a BPO. That's really what I'm I'm beefing about because I really like the very limited edition low run stuff that's floating around because uh, I thought that was. That was very cool, See, you know, like having I didn't, it really low into stuff. Because I wouldn't use any of them because I knew I couldn't replenish them. Oh, it's all Warbarge swag, war barge swag frankly. Yeah, I don't load in the Warbarges anymore, so... And see, you're right, you barely see the Warbarge. You see a heck of a lot more purple suits now than you did when it was only the BPC. That's fair. Now, oh, you, you know what? You totally just reminded me of... I've said this, I think, in passing on the show one time, but... This is actually probably the point where I, the, like, probably the one very few um, askers that I would really like the, this is just my personal pitch for the CPM to take. Uh, I would like Navy issue drop suits or, you know, militia issue drop sheets. They made those $10 pack or those $9 packs, um, you know, for the, all the different four, the four factions. They had a slightly like a kind of a unique color skin on them and all that kind of good stuff. But they were like your standard advanced and proto suits. Like in EVE, like when you, you've got like the T1 stuff and then like a, a, a tweener fit, like something that's like the faction fits basically. If they could do faction fit drop suits. I think that would be the bomb diggity. They've already got like all the artwork down because they're all the stuff from those packs. Did you but just they, say bomb diggity in our podcast? Yes, I did. But if they would actually okay. tweak the stats a little bit, I think that would be pretty legit. Uh, you, they could be, they're slightly mo better than like your standard drop suit of the same tier because that's exactly how the faction ships are in EVE. Uh, I would just, off of that like is like literally make spreadsheet changes to them a little bit like maybe a little bit more cp pg just something racial like speed or tank or whatever but I, i'll just offer that that might be kind of an interesting interesting way to get some uh cheap new content out there i'm pretty sure the imperial navy will be very popular yeah probably then there's silver and blue blue color I like the, you know, I thought the Caldari with that uh, that gray and blue color was pretty good. The uh, the Mimitar had like a brown and red, right? Yeah. It did both dodgy camos, and I think they already been done before elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, but like, like I said, that seems like that would be a really uh, like a really keen way to to a add some some variety in terms of the drop suits, other than just raw color. There's actually a stat difference, and then B. You, perhaps I'm just saying perhaps that the only way that you could earn those is through faction warfare. Just throwing that out there. 
Well, we, we, we kind of had that with the recruiter uh, BPOs you could get, where they were, if I remember, slightly different. Like, I think the the basic recruiter assault suit had, like, an extra PG and a little less of something else, so it wasn't exactly the same. And there were actually some fits at the time I could only do on those suits, which is kind of cool. And the, the weapons as well, like, the recruit assault rifle does actually more damage than a standard, but with militia stats all for the rest of the stats. Just, yeah. So, yeah, I think you could do something that was more faction-based. I mean... One of my complaints about the faction warfare from the start was that it, they were just specialist suits. They were just Orum versions, basically, for LP. And I kind of had wished they had performed more like faction gear and then Eve did, where it was actually different and unique rather than just a rehashing with a different color. Yeah, and the beauty of that is it's literally just like database changes. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't have to change anything else. It's, uh, you know, it's the classic... It seems to me, or I mean, it's probably more difficult than I think maybe, but off the top of my head, it seems like it'd be one of those that would fit really well into like a faction warfare focused hotfix. Like I so said, just that's, that's my, that's truly my one, my one pitch to the CPM about a, like a serious, you know, ad or idea. Faction suits. Hmm. It's not, not a lot of power words coming back. I'm just. We're, we're thinking. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm hurt. I'm just going to say I, I was I was hoping for more of a verbal high five for my bros, but it's okay. <laughs> well, while we're in there, you guys can just do the pirate suits and make Jason very, very happy. Okay, now I'll tell you right now, I would I would I would consider not using a Mac at least for two to three weeks if if there's a pirate but pirate drop suit. There was Here, here's there. your chance. Desert. Wow, you, you can you can break him away from the evil Mac in in if you just give him pirate suits. You have to do it now. Oh wow, that's that's a that's a tall order. Aren't you gonna stop if it's? Aren't you gonna have to stop if Legion it, it doesn't support Max? <laughs> no, because it because Diablo three uh, currently supports Mac, so that's probably where I would go. <laughs> Diablo three, huh? Now, yeah, I, I mentioned that. Has last. that game gotten any better? Oh, well, I don't. Well, yeah, I have, I have I absolutely so. no frame of reference other than what you told me last week, uh, Iron Wolf. So I've been nosing around on it. It's it's you know it's definitely you're right. It's definitely different than Diablo One, uh, but it, it seems like it's a pretty pretty slick. You know, I it's have, a clicky game, but it's. I have slick. Diablo Three, and I've actually never tried it. <laughs> I actually do own it, but I've never tried it. This sounds like most of my Steam libraries. One. Um, you know, I, I got it. I never had any interest really in trying it that much. And then people said it was bad. And so I just never got around to it. Nah, the so. end game's bad. Or was. So it's fun to play through for a little while. Yes, it, it, it's enough. It's good enough for the um, first pass through. That's fair. Uh, I mean, like I said, I, I'm, I am not entirely sure, you know, what, like, cause my gaming time is very limited. So I usually can only really manage two games pretty legitimately at any one time. And that's usually like a, a huge split in time. So uh, it's, you know, I have to kind of pick and choose or if, I, if I'm like off for a week or something like that, I can dive into another game. That's usually great for console games. So you have, so you have dust and, and Eve, or do you have room for other games? Um, well, what I'll, what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll stop playing one or the other, those two games for like a week. Or, or at least four or five days and, and try it out, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, okay. what, I've, what I normally use as a time filler, though, like when I'm traveling, um, there are some really, really good uh, tablet games out there, like some surprisingly good, yeah, there are. really deep tablet games out there. But I, I'm yeah. willing to bet you have an those. iPad, though. I do, yeah. It's pretty limiting on what sort of uh, awesome you can experience. I, I'm sure it is, but at least it doesn't report to me via the NSA like your shit does. Uh, no, they all do that. Um, You'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised, too, on who doesn't uh, report to the NSA. Yeah, like, seriously. They're they're not allowed to tell you that they report to the NSA. Mm, well, I'm just, I'm going to remain mute out of, like... I, let me put it this way. World they, used to, they used to offer <laughs> on the Apple statement a, they, they made a, a statement that said, we do not report uh, you know, we have not been um, forced to give any information to the FBI under secret order. And that line is gone from Apple's uh, reports. Well, that's true. But anyway, uh, I can, like, like I said, if I ever want to tell anybody to NSA anything, I can pretty much just send an email to anybody from Google and I'm good. 
Uh, so that being said, uh, I, my alternate game time is usually via a tablet. Uh, and, and I've found like some really pretty decent games on there. It, a lot of it depends on what you want to play, but um, I've said, I've, I've seen games that are probably the equivalent of the old like Neverwinter Nights D and D like uh, computer games that are in that realm of quality, uh, which is probably saying something. I mean, it's like late '90s stuff, but it's you know pretty legit games. Definitely fun for an airplane. I like the strategy games so on tablets. I've been playing uh, Battle Nations lately, and that seems to be that seems to be the one game with a better economy. And it, it doesn't seem to try to force you to do, uh, to go microtransaction as many of the other ones do, but um, it's it the way it, it approaches is entirely different from the other games as well. Yeah, um, you know what was a surprisingly good port was XCOM. I thought that was actually I was very surprised how well they did that on the on the iPad. It was pretty good. And hey, Twin- I I just have to say something on the podcast. You know, I I don't hate vehicles. I really don't. You, you like blowing sure, them off sure and never die from them. That's that's about what. No, you, I, I don't mm-hmm. hate vehicles. Mm-hmm. Okay. I actually I actually made a post where I I argued in favor of vehicle users. I felt very bad afterwards for having written it, but I did write one. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. I just don't take me the wrong way here, because you know that, like I like you're you're my bro, right? But, so don't take this the wrong way. But and you don't even have to answer. I'm relatively confident there was some discussion somewhere that no matter how bad whatever was going on you were really glad that judge wasn't in the room to counter you when you were talking about a vehicle at some point i'm i'm absolutely confident that that happened at least once you'll never admit I it don't publicly don't think so but I no guarantee it, did, that it did, especially not like internal cpm stuff i really wished he was there um like <laughs> when the, the the kind of the fallout was coming out about um the uh delta change and, and people weren't happy particularly the ads pilots who have shown an incredible incredible volume um in pertaining to how much they don't like the changes um i really wish judge was there um and and i i think that uh it is v- very valuable to have discussion on both sides of any argument all right well now that we've established you can give a politically correct answer and sidestep the truth very well okay Hey! Um, <laughs> hey! Wow! Yeah, I, I wish Judge was there too because he would. I mean, we would have. We would still would have um probably pushed the ADS nerf anyways, but his ideas on how to nerf it would have probably been um much safer. That, and that's that's kind of what I, that's honestly very true. All kidding aside, that's uh that's the beauty of having people with uh, equally valid but very opposed uh, viewpoints that can approach something from a fairly unemotional and logical standpoint. So I, I think that's actually that's actually a really good point, Iron Wolf. The uh, so with that, I, like anybody else got any shots for the week? Anything? Anything? We'll save them for next week. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Uh, we we'll go ahead and kick off some shout outs here. Uh, Iron Wolf, you're at the top. We'll go ahead and lead off with you, brother. I'd like to give a shout out to um, CCP Vertidi's team that's worked with them on 1.9. I hope that um, they they're made public, so you get to thank these people, wonderful people individually. I also like to give a shout out to um, uh, the new folks that who invited me to their channel on uh, Shaken Babies. <laughs> they seem to have a quite a bit of um, faction warfare fighting going on, so I get to listen on their um, panic chatter about um, orbital bombardment's not coming in time because there's uh, 50 guys on their ass. Well, yeah. By the way, uh, I know Killer Killer Twelve listens quite a bit. He's he's been trying desperately to to get around and like roll some people up in Molden Heath. Uh, so just offering out to any Eve folks out there or any Dust guys that play Eve, if you ever want like buffet PvP, and usually, it, I mean, it's kind of like Club and Baby Seals usually, but. You can pretty much roll up on on most uh, you know OB fit desis and like steamroll them pretty good. It's not hard to figure out when the timers are. It's not hard to figure out when people are in Molden Heath with a few scouts out. So just throwing it out there for anybody's listening. Uh, Pokey. Yeah, just a uh, shout out to the dev team. Uh, did see, I'm very excited to see 1.9. Like I said, it's it's made me a little more hopeful in terms of CCP's commitment to the game. So that that's good to see. Uh, shout out to my corp, OSG as usual. You guys are awesome. And shout out to uh, the regulars here on Biomass. It's always good to have you on here and 
and talk uh, what's going on. So thanks. Cool. Soraya? I am going to give my shout out to uh, Jadik for uh, listening to the podcast and helpfully sending me links. Um, he, he sent me over Twitter a link to um, the uh, flashlight um, bug um, <laughs> after we discussed it. Um, and uh, to uh, CCP Rouge, Rotati, and Logi Bro for um, hopefully setting up which should be an excellent upcoming uh bout of content and and all of the the unnamed other devs involved cool cool all right let's see shout outs for the week uh i, I was originally contemplating a bull durham ask shout out but i will save that for another day and those of you that were old enough to watch bull durham and know what i mean you'll you'll appreciate my comment uh, so I would like to echo Soraya's uh, note about JDEC. He's a loyal listener, and he often has some really, really witty uh, Twitter posts. So if you get on Twitter, I highly recommend you follow at JDEC Uh Really good dude. Has done a lot for the Dust community, frankly. Probably a lot more than people realize. Um, and beyond that, I think... Let me see here. Who's on my list? Oh. I, I will give a shout out to at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Uh, so if you want to know who that is, you're going to have to follow at Wikipedia Brown and you'll have, get to know. <laughs> um, related question. Have you ever seen TLDR Wikipedia? No, but I have not. Google I can it. only imagine Google. what it's like. Google it. It's great. Um, yeah. Um, also, I should mention. Um, after the excellent performance last week by um, Jason, if anybody has voice impressions they want to come in on the show and do, <laughs> hit, hit us up. We'll, we'll see who can do the best. Oh goodness gracious! Oh, I can already, I can already see this. See, this is how you keep this is this is how you have a lot of fun with this. So on the like, I'm, I'm already I've already put the challenge out there to the CPM members that come on the show. If you can ever figure out how to get a, like a dev to show up on the show, like Rotati or Logi Bro. Like we'll have like a wrestling promo off, you know. I'll, I'll take them on mano a mano, and we'll see how it goes. All right, uh, with that, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and bring the show to a close. Episode twenty-five of Biomassy, and just I said that just for the record, everybody catch this. So I said episode twenty-five, right? And I said that at the beginning of the show because so far, Zell, whose Twitter handle since I'm on a Twitter Twitter roll right now, is OCD Trekkie. Uh, OCD for real. <laughs> like, so the routinely, routinely, I will mess up the, uh, the episode number. I'm, I'm convinced. Some, of, some of that is on purpose. Some of it is not. And so, like I said, guys, I really, appre- <laughs> I appreciate everybody listening to us either live or, uh, following us up on iTunes. And, and again, feel free to hit us up. Uh, we had a, had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, good nature, good nature barbing back and forth, but again, it's generally because we actually care a little bit about the games. So uh, please ping us with any ideas for the show or guests that you want on, or if you yourself want to be on the show, uh, we'd love to have you on. Or, well, most of you, you know, we, we have let on Killer 12, so we'll let on damn near anybody. Uh, but feel free, you know, ping us uh, at the biomass.net website or on our Twitter or on email or in game, frankly. And we'll be around and we're always glad to get your feedback or uh, take on topics that you want. Uh, and with that, guys, we're, again, signing off. Episode 34, Biomass to the Close.